When researchers remotely hacked a Jeep Cherokee in 2015 using the vehicle's internet-connected infotainment system to turn off the engine as it drove, hackers Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek had forever changed the auto industry. It was really an awakening. Everyone described it as the one moment where the industry finally grappled with the fact that they are vulnerable. Reuters correspondent Tina Bellin interviewed executives from Harman International, the supplier that made the infotainment system that was hacked four years ago. And they tell her that since then, Harman has spent tens of millions of dollars to bolster their product's cyber defenses. Cybersecurity experts generally recognize that suppliers are often the weakest link because they already operate on very thin margins. They can't invest a lot to ramp up their cybersecurity efforts. And so um, they're often seen as um, a way to gain entry into a vehicle. But the suppliers have recognized that. The auto manufacturers have recognized that. And so many of the experts told me that anyone who doesn't put these investments um, into its uh, production cycle simply won't be able to take part in the modern automotive industry. While much progress has been made since the 2015 Jeep hack in securing safety critical functions like engine control, remote hacks are still occurring. In March of 2019, two young researchers breached Tesla's infotainment system. And while the car wasn't brought to a halt like in 2015, it revived fears that a hacker can still find a way inside a car. The risks of cybersecurity are increasing, not decreasing. Adam Scow of Consumer Watchdog, which published a study in August warning of mass cyber attacks on connected vehicles, says automakers must do more to secure their cars. In the short term, we want to see a kill switch so that a driver can shut off the internet connection in the event of an attack. Uh, this will help prevent a fleet-wide disaster. Kind of like an airplane mode on our phone, there should be a button. It would be very cheap for the car companies to put it in the car. The driver just presses it and they can disconnect. Some in the self-driving car space employ kill switches, including Shai Magzimov, the founder and CEO of Phantom Auto. His company is developing a system that can drive a car by remote control. And he says a kill switch for internet connected cars on the road today is a good idea. What's happening is we're getting vehicles more connected and more connected. Uh, cars today are not just hardware pieces, they have software. And software is something that is connected to the internet, whether you like it or not. I think that uh, even just for the sake of the passenger comfort, uh, that should be there. Uh, let alone the technology uh, uh, that can break when something happens and then Yes, of course, when a cyber attack happens, you want to have the ability to override the system with a manual uh, button. After Consumer Watchdog published its study, two U.S. senators asked the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration if it had any plans to address the risk that Internet-connected cars pose to public safety. But some in the industry of securing cars think that advancements in cybersecurity have made a mass attack or even taking control of a single car remotely extremely unlikely. I mean, anything's possible, right? I mean, what's the probability? Is it probable? No. Is it less than probable? Yes. Robert Leali, the man in charge of the car hacking village at the 2019 DEF CON cybersecurity conference, says the automaker's willingness to engage with the hacker community has led to better security for connected cars. The goal of security is to raise the bar, the cost bar, so that it makes it very challenging, if not not advantageous for the person or persons trying to do it to actually want to uh, launch that attack. So it's a return on investment. Really, it's just a simple matrix. I'm not too worried about it from a, from my, from a hacking perspective. I'm not saying it's not going to happen because it's not, nothing's for sure. But as we work with industry and we work to help solve those problems, I think the probability goes down even more. Still, that low probability hasn't put everyone's mind at ease. None of the findings and problems that we've raised in a report have been denied. Nobody said that couldn't happen. Now saying it probably won't happen isn't good enough. We have 50 million cars today connected to the internet on the road and they want to put more connected on the, on the road. The 2015 Jeep hackers Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek now work for Cruise Automation, a startup owned by General Motors. And Miller has said that the authors of the kill switch study are overreacting. The cybersecurity experts I've spoken to and also a few of these white hat hackers who are the good hackers, so to speak, um, trying to get into vehicles, have actually said that it's almost impossible nowadays to do a remote hack as in the Jeep hack. 
So it is much harder to do it from further away. You actually need access to the vehicle nowadays to perpetrate such a hack. And so they said the resources you need in order to um, make a Jeep hack possible these days are really some that only a nation state would have. Back at DEF CON, some weren't opposed to the idea of a kill switch. Would you not want a kill switch if your car was trying to drive you off the edge of the cliff? I would. Campbell Murray, the global head of cybersecurity delivery for BlackBerry, which has expanded into autonomous and connected vehicle technology, said that without a government requirement, the probability of a kill switch becoming standard in new cars is also low. I think just from a purely safety critical system, as we do with uh, heavy plant machinery, that that kill switch exists, it's there for a reason. How consumers will react to it, how consumers will have uh, confidence in buying a connected vehicle, if it has a big switch that says turn me off, that's where the manufacturer's going to figure that out.